What's up everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Grenade here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to pass arguments through a URL in Django. And by this, I don't mean query string parameters, I mean just you through the URL itself. So I'll show you what I mean by this once I set one up. So what I'm going to do is create a new project. So we'll call this, or excuse me, a new app. We'll call this URL example. And I'll add that to settings, even though it's not completely necessary, but I'll add it anyway, URL example. Okay, so what I want to do is my app is not running, so I'll start it again. Okay, so in this new app that I just created, I'm going to create a URLs module. So URLs.py, and this is going to be very similar to the URLs module in the main project, of course. So I can just take this so I don't have to type code out. And it's pretty much going to be just like this. And simply what this means is these are the URLs associated with my app. And here, if I add in the include, I can specify which URLs will be matched for what, and I'll have them sent to my app. So the what in this case is blank. So pretty much the domain, anything that matches that will get sent to my other URLs modules. So by including URL example dot URLs, it is going to use the URLs in that one. This could be a list of URLs as well, just like this one here, admin.site.urls. But in this particular case, I'm just including. So I'll start by creating a very simple URL. Let's just call this profile. And I'll create a view. So from period import views, I'm gonna create a very simple view. I'll call this profile. So view, views.profile. And I'll go to my views file and create that function called profile. Takes in a request, of course. And instead of using the render shortcut, I'm going to use uh, the HTTP response because I'm not going to build a template in this video. So from Django.HTTP import HTTP response. Okay, and then here I can simply return that response with some text that gets converted to HTML. So I'll say this is the profile page. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. So basically what's happening is uh, in the original URLs file, it is going to match on blank, meaning there's nothing after the domain. It's when it gets sent to this URLs file and it's going to look at the patterns here. It's looking for this list URL patterns and then it's gonna start looking at the paths in that list and it's going to match on profile. And then it's going to send to the profile function in my views module. So if I do slash, or slash profile, I see this is the profile page. If I do some gibberish, then it gives me a 404 because I haven't set up a path for that particular URL. So what I mean by passing in arguments to the URL is I mean something like this. So if I say profile and then I pass in my name, Anthony, uh, that is what I want. I want my name to be an argument that is passed in the URL. So this isn't uh, a permanent URL in a sense, and said it is dynamic depending on what the name should be. And you see that here, I get a page not found because it doesn't know how to handle that when I have something after profile. So to fix that, what I'll do is I'll add the angle brackets. So the angle brackets mean that this is now an argument, or you can think of it as a variable as well. This is an argument that is going to be passed in. Now I'll give it a name. I'll just call this the username. And when I run it now, and let's see, I need the trailing slash there. If I run this now, it tells me that there's a type error at profile Anthony. And that's because it is trying to send the value of Anthony to my function here, profile, but profile doesn't allow for anything to be added to it. So to fix this, I need to add in a parameter to profile with the same name as the value that I have here, which is username. So I'll just add a username. And then when I run this again, we see this is the profile page. And if I go back to just profile, we'll see that it has a 404 now because it can no longer match on just the profile. But I'll get back to that in a moment. Let me go back to Anthony and I'll just show you that I can actually see that Anthony was passed in. By using this username here, 
the user is blank, I can actually pass in that username. And the format should go outside of the apostrophe with username. And then if I refresh this, I see the user's Anthony. If I change this to John, I see the user's John. Sarah, the user is Sarah. So as you can see, whatever I type in the URL gets passed directly to the view function. <clears throat> and if I want this original profile to work, what I need to do is I need to first have a default for my profile view. So the default will be default user. So if I add that and I refresh, we see that nothing changes. <clears throat> but if I add another path with just profile, so no username this time, send it to the same function, then what happens is when it matches on here, it's going to get sent to views profile, but it's not going to send any extra data along with it. But since I have a default here, that default will be used inside of the function itself. So if I go to slash profile slash, I see the user is default user. So that's pretty easy to understand and to use. Uh, really where the problems come in is where you have multiple paths that can match the same thing. So before I can get to an example of that, first let me talk about converters. So the converters are a way to kind of force a certain type of data to be matched in the URL. So by default, it's a string, so it would be str str. And if you want to be explicit, you can add str. And you can also have int for an integer, so like 5, 100, 10,056, something like that, an integer. And you can also have slug. A slug is basically a string that has um, alphanumeric characters plus dashes or underscores. So A to Z, lowercase and uppercase, zero through nine, and then dash and underscore. Or you can probably say hyphen is more of a correct term. So a dash would be like two hyphens put together, a hyphen is just the, the smaller. Um, there's a technical name for both, but I can't remember. <clears throat> but anyway, that's what a slug is. And usually a slug represents a human readable form of something that is unique in your app. Uh, you're probably seeing them most on blog apps. So like the name of the blog post will be the slug. So if the blog post is hello world, then it would be hello hyphen world in the URL. And that's just to make it more human readable. <clears throat> so in this case, what I want to do is I want to match on an integer for the username. So let's see what happens when I try to match on an integer. <clears throat> it has the default user. If I type in Anthony again, even with the drilling slash, I see I get a 404. And the reason why I get a 404 is because it is looking for only integers here. If I add in, let's say 50, then it works because that is an integer. If I change it back to something that isn't an integer, so John, I get a 404 as we can see. Now, now what you can do with this is you can have multiple URLs that are very similar, but they take in different types of data. So if I wanted to just do something like this path profile slug, uh, let's call this article. I can send this to views profile and then add a trailing comma there and then we'll see that it is looking to pass an article when you do this so now what happens is if i add article and then default article it kind of just goes through the same process now i'm not using that article here because i haven't put it in the function itself but as you can see it works so that's not a very realistic use case, but this is. So if I say something like uh, article request, and then I'll have a variable called article. The article name is blank. And then format this with article. I cannot spell right now. I don't think I can ever spell when I do this. Uh, I'll call this article value so it's a little more clear. So article value there article value there, and then 
<clears throat> article value there. I think article name would have been better, but it's too late now. And anyway, I'm going to pass that to views dash or dot article instead of views dot profile. And what happens now is for the original one where I have an integer, it's going to send to the profile page. And when I have a slug, it is going to pass to the article one. So this is the article. So the article name is this is the article. So it gets passed to a completely different view function. And of course, uh, if I didn't do either one of those and I didn't pass anything in, then it would just go to profile and it would still use the default username. I can get rid of this article now because I'm no longer using it in profile, but you got the idea. <clears throat> and one important thing you need to note when you're dealing with this is they have to be in a certain order. So if I move this one above, and then I went, this is the article, and then I went back to 50, it says the article name is 50. And the reason why it does that is because it was able to match on the slug first. So remember, slug has characters from A to Z and zero to nine. So because five and zero are from zero to nine, of course, it matches on the first one. But that's not what I wanted. So the way you order these when you have paths that can potentially match the same thing is you go from the most specific to the most general. So in this case, if I move this above, an integer is more specific than a slug. So I will start with the integer and then I'll move on to the slug and then this doesn't even match on the same thing, so it's okay. And if I want something even more specific, like a static path, I can have profile and then let's say like 28 since of use profile. What happens here is if I pass in 28 in the URL, it's going to match on, I think my app crash because I have a syntax error somewhere and that's because I didn't add the comma. All right, so let's try that again. So if I go here, uh, it matches on 28 and it says the user is default user. And the reason why is because this one's not passing anything to the view function. Unlike this one where it's passing the number to the function. So 28 doesn't pass anything, but 29 passes 29. And I know username is not a very descriptive uh, number or it doesn't really match what a number is, but you can see what's going on here. I can change this to be anything I want, it's just a name. But you can see here that when you are setting your paths, you want to put the more specific ones first, and then as it gets more and more general, you can put them after. Of course, it's something that's not even related in a sense that it can't match at all. You can put that anywhere you want, but just know that Django starts at the, at the beginning of the list and it works its way through the list um, in the order that the items appear in the list. So that's really all I want to talk about in regards to passing values through the URL in Django. Perhaps in a future video, I'll talk about how to use query strings in Django, but just for this video, I wanted to cover uh, these in the URL converters because they can be used in a lot of different situations. Of course, there are other converters that you can use. Uh, there's one for UID. Um, there's the string one, which is the default. And there's another one that is in there that I can't quite remember for some reason, but um, it's there. It's not very common. That's why I can't remember it. And of course, you can create your own converters as well. And they will just match on whatever your custom converter is trying to look for. And maybe I'll cover that in a future video as well. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this, any questions about how uh, passing values through URL works in Django or how the converters work in Django, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.